Hello guys, welcome back to the series of tutorials on C++. I am Deepak Kunyal and in this tutorial we are going to discuss about constructors and destructors in inheritance. So prerequisite to this tutorial is knowing about constructors and destructors. As you have come so far in this series of tutorials, so I hope you know about constructors and destructors. But by chance if you miss those lectures, I suggest you to go back and watch them first. Right? So let's start this concept now. So whenever you create an object of a class, let me make a class for you. It's just a symbolic class. I'm not uh, writing any class definition here. But if you create a parent class and then you create an object of this class like this, it calls its constructor automatically, right? And it initializes the members of this class. Clear? Suppose you have another class that is child class and child class is inheriting parent class. So whenever you create object of child class in this way, it's sure that it's going to call default constructor of child class. Clear? So that is must. But before that, constructor of base class will be invoked. So whenever you create this object it's going to call constructor of child class but first it will call constructor of base class so this is number one and this is number two right so this will be the order of calling of constructors clear so our point now is why is base class constructor being called on creating an object of derived class you understood this part i am saying i have created an object of child class but why it is happening that it is calling constructor of this base class first and then constructor of child class after that. So what happens actually when you inherit something? So in this case, whenever you have a parent class and you are inheriting that parent class in child class. So here actually the data members and member functions are automatically provided here, right? And of course, it is based on access specifiers that we have studied in our first lecture of inheritance series. So if you write child and then you write parent this way, this is private inheritance, but it could be protected or public. All right. We discuss that thing. So when data members and member functions are coming to derived class, they are coming there. But definition of these members is still exist in the base class. Right. So let us suppose you have a data member here x, it automatically comes to the child class x, but still its definition is in the base class. So when we create an object of derived class, all members of derived class must be initialized first so that you can use them. Clear? But this thing is only possible when these are initialized by the base class because these are the definitions of base class. That's why it calls the base class constructor first. Let's take an example and understand this thing in more clear way. So we have a class parent here. And then there is a constructor which should be public. If you make it private, that's not going to work because you can't call it from outside. And that's why you will not be able to make an object of this parent class. So just write a message here, base class constructor. Now try to inherit this base class and here we'll create a constructor i will copy this whole thing to save our time now create a main function and here i am going to create an object of child class make it c and we are not doing anything else here compile this program constructor inheritance is the file name it is compiled successfully now execute it so you can see when we create an object of child class, it calls base class constructor first and then derived class constructor, right? There is one more thing. This is parent class. So what if you have multiple parent classes? It means you can inherit multiple base classes here. So parent one, you can write like this and then parent two for the another class. And this is base class constructor one and base class constructor two 
so I will write it like this base class constructor 1 copy this whole thing from here constructor 2 and then this is a red class clear we also need to change the constructor name which I missed so let's make them parent 1 and parent 2 now everything is fine let's compile this program compile it successfully and here you can see base class constructor 1 is called first so it means this constructor is called first and then another constructor which is parent 2 it is called after that so actually it start calling constructor from the left hand side all right so this is the way default constructors for the base classes are called let's understand this thing for the destructors also suppose we have parent class 1 then we have parent class 2 and then we have a child class c and this child class is inheriting parent 1 and parent 2 so the order of constructor calling should be this so first constructor will be called for p1 then it will be called for p2 and then it will be called for c if we talk about destructor calling this order is going to be reversed for the destructors so the first destructor will be called for c then for p2 and then for p1 you can also say that this is the order of constructors and this is the order of destructors so whether you look at this this side or you look at this thing both are same clear so i will show you this thing by implementing it first so you have constructor here you can create destructor with the same name but you have to put this sign tilde sign here and this is destructor one i will copy this whole thing without wasting much time and i will write it here make it parent two and then make it two and then you can create destructor of child class and here you have to write derived class destructor so i hope you are aware of the way destructors are implemented and called let's compile this program it's compiled successfully so whenever we run this program you just look at the order of calling constructors and destructors right so you can see base class constructor 1 is called first then base class constructor 2 is called after that and then derived class constructor and after that you can see the order is reversed completely derived class destructor is called first then base class destructor 2 you can see it here so it means you can think it like a stack whatever you put it in first that comes out last clear there is some logical meaning to that also because you are creating constructor of base class first so that should be destroyed at the end right so this is the way constructors and destructors are called in inheritance and we basically talked about default constructors here in the next lecture we are going to proceed a bit further and learn about calling constructor with parameters right so till now if you have any doubt or query regarding any of these things you can write in the comments and i will try to respond back so see in the next video with some new concept till then thank you so much